Now I want you to see in here at uh, Whole Foods how much distilled water they do have and spring water. This is just this one little side. You guys can see how far back it goes. Let me show you the other aisle. I need you to see just how many different bottled waters they have these days. This is the entire aisle of bottled waters. Whether they are alkaline, whether they are pH balanced, whether they're spring water, whether they're sparkling water, whether it is distilled water, then you have flavored water. You have a little bit of absolutely everything because this is the new push. But what I want to know is if on the back of these, because I've never actually paid attention when I'm at the store, if it shows you exactly where it is coming from. Oh, looky there. Sourced Frontier Springs located in New Tripoli, Pennsylvania, Bangor, Pennsylvania, Foster Township, Pennsylvania. And what's interesting is exactly what is happening in Pennsylvania right now with the EPA and their water. Okay, so we're going to talk about the water in Pennsylvania. We're also going to talk about Biden's new executive order regarding the environment. The fact that Pennsylvania is in the hot seat for water pollution. Iowa, though, with a possible water pollution solution. And then uh, just something else that uh, a person, Kat, sent me on Instagram that I want to show you guys that it's extremely important. So first off, let's start with Pennsylvania. We'll, we'll get to Biden in a second, but let's go to Pennsylvania real quick. I want you guys to know that we've been talking about the water sources and how they're all a little contaminated, if you will, for numerous weeks. Numerous weeks we've talked about this, whether it's the Ohio River, Delaware River, whether it's Mississippi, whether it is the Gulf itself, all these little side streams and creeks leading into these bigger rivers. And uh, it turns out it's, I mean, it's bad everywhere. We know this already, but the EPA agrees to make Pennsylvania cut Chesapeake Bay pollution. You guys hear that, right? EPA agrees to make Pennsylvania cut Chesapeake Bay pollution. The fact that it has to be made to happen is a big deal to me. The fact that states don't on their own want to stop the pollution from going into the waterways that their residents drink from is really weird to me. And again, I know it's always profits over people. And when the EPA has to step in and say, hey, listen, no, we agree that it's too much pollution and so we're gonna make you stop. It's, it's kind of a big deal to me. I mean, I don't fully trust the EPA as it is. We already know that. I think they mishandled everything from the get-go when it comes to the Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. And they've mishandled uh, numerous things since then. But I want to show you guys here, first off, this lovely little picture of the Chesapeake Bay. Yes, I'm in my car. It's where we're recording from today. You guys will be fine. So according to this, uh, Pennsylvania must minimize its outsized role in polluting the Chesapeake Bay according to a proposed settlement agreement announced on Thursday. Yesterday, today is Friday, my dudes. Welcome to the Squirrel Tribe. Uh, announced Thursday that would subject the state to increased oversight from federal environmental officials. The agreement comes after other, jur other jurisdictions in the Bay's watershed. Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, and the District of Columbia, D.C., filed a lawsuit in 2020 arguing that Pennsylvania wasn't pulling its weight in their collective effort to reach a 2025 pollution reduction goal. Well, we're right around the corner from 2024, which then puts you at 2025, and if they haven't started yet, they're definitely not going to make their goal by 2025, which is why now the EPA has to step in because you have Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware, and D.C. going, hey, listen, we're doing our part in this whole little project, but if Pennsylvania is not going to pull pull their end of the deal, it's going to make it harder for all of us. We can only do so much. It costs so much to do these things without Pennsylvania actually being on board like they're supposed to be. We can't reach this 2025 goal. So um, the states were looking to reduce harmful nutrient and sediment runoff that flows from farms and cities into the Chesapeake. Now, after we talk about this, we'll talk about how Iowa and their farms are finding a way to help with the water pollution. So stick around for that. It says here, environmental groups also filed a similar lawsuit around the same time and the two were combined. They've made it into one big lawsuit. Thursday's agreement between the plaintiffs and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency would resolve both. The Bay is a national treasure and a vital part of Maryland's identity, Maryland Attorney General Anthony Brown said on a call with reporters on Thursday afternoon. Marylanders deserve a clean, healthy bay, but we can only get so far without the commitment and effort of all jurisdictions within the bay's watershed. Like I said, it's just like when you were in school. If, if you had a group project, if three or four out of five pulled their weight and the fifth one didn't, it would drag a grade down because you couldn't get it all done. And that's what's happening here. So it says the nation's largest estuary has been gradually rebounding at, under a federal cleanup program launched in 1983 that put an end to unbridled pollution. But more recent efforts have been lagging. Y'all hear that? 
1983, um, the EPA decided that unbridled pollution had to stop. Before then, it was just willy-nilly, do what you want, free will of co corporations and whatever else, just to pollute the crap out of waterways. So that to me is crazy that it had, it, 1983 is when they were like, huh, maybe we shouldn't let so many chemicals into our water. Maybe this unbridled pollution is a bad idea. Let's, let's pull this thing back. So it says here in Pennsylvania, I didn't look this word up first and y'all are going to like kill me in the comments for it. In Pennsylvania, the Sus Susquehanna, Sus Susquehanna River cuts through the state's farmland, picking up a uh, polluted runoff before pouring into the Chesapeake in Maryland, producing about half of its fresh water supply. Uh, the 2020 litigation arose from an earlier settlement agreement that required the watershed states to each implement a pollution reduction plan by 2025. Pennsylvania largely did not follow through and federal environmental officials have failed to adequately intervene according to the lawsuits. Now we're talking about Chesapeake Bay here, but we have talked about previously the um, Shell petrochemical plant that went up in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, right there on the Ohio River in November of 2022 and how within the first couple months of operation, they've already blown through their allotted, <laughs> allotted environmental chemical hazard release um, for the entire year. And they've only been up and running for, you know, a, a few months at this point, at the point they already went through it, which we're going to talk about in a second also. It says here, the so-called pollution diet it sets, it sets limits in the Chesapeake for nitrogen and phosphorus, as well as sediment. The nutrient pollution often comes from agricultural fertilizer and livestock waste. It stimulates excessive algae growth that can create low oxygen dead zones where aquatic animals and plants are unable to survive. Bad news for Maryland's crab industry, oyster harvest, and more. Robert T. Brown, president of the Maryland Watermen's Association, said the upcoming fish spawning season provides an annual reminder of the myriad values of clean water. This is a major victory for the Chesapeake Bay, he said, of the proposed settlement. The agreement, which will undergo a 30-day public, co uh, public comment period before taking effect, provides a mechanism for holding EPA officials accountable if they fail to enforce pollution requirements. When is the government ever held accountable for what they do or do not do? I'd like any somebody just give me give me an example of when they've been held accountable as opposed to and actually follow through with it being held accountable. Like there is a result to being held accountable. Anyway, um, it also lays out specific oversight actions, including an annual report examining Pennsylvania's progress that will be published online and calls for additional grant funding opportunities to help Pennsylvania make necessary changes. Now, here's my question. Why do they get additional grant funding opportunities? What about Maryland, Delaware, District of Columbia, and West Virginia? Whoever else that is, they're doing their part. Why don't they also get some extra grant money to, to help them out? Why only Pennsylvania? Just because you're the slacker and you, you need some help doesn't mean that they should step in and give you more money just because you're slacking. That's not how this works. Um, the state has more farmland than others in the watershed, a source of pollution that has proven difficult to address. I don't care if you have more. Still, do, do your job. Uh, federal officials also agreed to exercise more oversight of other pollution sources in Pennsylvania, such as factories, <laughs> hello, Shell Petrochemical, um, concentrated livestock operations, and sewage treatment plants. That includes identifying and regulating them through an existing EPA permitting process. However, there's always an however. The agreement avoids asserting a broader definition of the EPA's oversight role under the Clean Water Act, saying the parties disagree on whether it's mandatory or discretionary. Officials with the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection didn't immediately respond to a request for comment Thursday afternoon. New York was also named defendant in the initial litigation, but later dropped from the lawsuit after it adequately amended its pollution reduction plans. So you want to tell me that New York can figure out how to get on board with this? New York. One of the dirtiest, well, New York City is like one of the dirtiest cities besides San Francisco and uh, San Diego. One of the dirtiest cities, probably Las Vegas. Las Vegas is crazy dirty also. You don't want to see Vegas in the daylight. But um, you're going to tell me that New York figured out how to do it, but like the state of Pennsylvania is dragging ass on this? Okay. Uh, let's see here. While the litigation was ongoing, Pennsylvania officials took steps to improve their implementation of a pollution reduction plan and obtain adequate funding. Last year, state lawmakers approved $154 million in pandemic, pandemic relief funding for a program that would help farmers implement more sustainable practices and prevent nutrients from entering the watershed. Prevent nutrients from entering the watershed. Maybe I don't understand this correctly. Don't you want nutrients? Well, no. I guess it depends on... It makes water hard then, right? That's what makes hard water when there's too much 
like nutrients. I don't know how this works, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I need to understand prevent nutrients from entering the, entering the watershed. If y'all have an idea, please let me know. Environmental groups have credited the Biden administration uh, for signing into for signing onto the proposed settlement agreement, saying the decision demonstrates a commitment to curbing pollution that was missing under former President Donald Trump. Despite the optimism, however, the 2025 pollution targets probably won't be achieved, said Hillary Harp Falk, president of the nonprofit Chesapeake Bay Foundation. The Chesapeake Bay Clean Water Blueprint, a plan established in 2010 to reduce pollution, has already faced significant challenges and slow progress. In a report earlier this year monitoring the Bay's health, the foundation said polluted runoff was increasing amid inconsistent enforcement from government agencies, new development and climate change, which is causing stronger rainstorms that produce more polluted runoff. While 2025 will be yet another missed deadline, the Blueprint's goals remains achievable and should remain our North Star, Falk said in a statement on Thursday. Together, we must build on lessons learned and accelerate progress toward a new deadline measured in years, not decades. EPA officials said they were unable to comment on the proposed settlement agreement during the 30-day public comment period. Okay, the agreement is just one part of EPA's broader strategy to work with the Bay States and other stakeholders to restore the Chesapeake Bay, the agency said in a statement. So, that's what's happening. Now, I want to show you guys what Kat sent me. Kat sent me this in a DM on Instagram. I'm going to show it to you right here. Again, it's going to be hard to see. I understand that because there will be a glare and, hey, you can see my little uh, Jeep duckies. Um, there will be a glare. I apologize for that, but you will all live. Okay, so what this says here, this is a postcard thing that Kat got in the mail, lives in uh, Pennsylvania, and it says, you are cordially invited to the Shell Pennsylvania Chemicals Project virtual community meeting Tuesday April 25th from 6 to 7 30 p.m. members of the Shell Polymers Monica leadership team will share updates on our operations and we will be joined by a member of the emergency response department of Beaver County to answer any questions you may have please register on our community information page www.shell.us backslash poly dash e listen I don't live there, but guess who's going to be attending this uh, Shell virtual virtual community meeting? Me. I don't know if I have to like fake an address or something. If anybody has an address, I can. I'll just fake one. It's fine. If you need an address, I'm gonna fake an address. I want to be part of this to see exactly what they're going to say, what's going on, the fact that Emergency Response Department of Beaver County will be there to answer questions because again, Shell Petrochemicals have blown their allotted contamination, water contamination, soil contamination, air contamination through the roof already and it's not even been an entire year, and they have more than doubled their yearly allotted, which is still the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life, yearly allotted contamination to our earth. Um, they've already blown through that, so I'm very interested in what's gonna happen there. Now, we know Pennsylvania is um, kind of in the hot seat because of their, their water, right? I mean, adding in shell petrochemical to pollute the Ohio River doesn't help anything. I know it's not the Chesapeake Bay, but it's still pollution that's happening in waterways that their residents drink from and that other people drink from. But what is interesting to me is that Iowa has found a way to make clean water. So it says here, low tech makes cleaner water in Iowa, Iowa so what's stopping it? And I want you to see here, uh, again, with the glare, you'll be fine. Um, you can see that this gentleman is digging in what looks like wood chips, right? Those are wood chips, okay? So what this says here is Slater, Iowa. Nick Heelan's Central Iowa farm looks much like other nearby farm on this chilly March day. Uh, this was written, though, Wednesday, April 19th, with uh, corn stubble stretching from a gravel road up over a low hill to the northern horizon. But look closely and you can see patches of muddy ground where a few months ago crews buried low-tech systems called bioreactors and streamside buffers that filter fertilizer-borne nitrates from water as it drains from Helan's field into nearby Big Creek and eventually the, De the Des Moines River. I'm pretty sure it's not Des Moines, it's Des Moines, right? Sure, Des Moines River. The underground devices work. The question is whether one Iowa County's promising new approach to an old problem can be expanded enough to finally address nitrate pollution that for years has endangered drinking water, made more than half the state's waterways unfit for fish and humans, and fueled a giant dead zone nearly 1,000 miles away in the Gulf of Mexico. Hey, guess where I live? The freaking Gulf of Mexico, people. Uh, Polk County is doing it by making it painless for farmers, handling all of the logistics and arrangements for the systems. 
and throwing in payments of $1,000 per site. Installations have exploded in the past two years to 104 after only a handful were installed the eight years before that. They paid me and they paid the cost of the installation, Helan said. That's sort of a no-brainer to me with very little lift, very little time. I can have this installed on my farm and it will ensure better water quality for everyone else downstream. The big challenge now is encouraging counties to launch and fund similar efforts to reduce runoff from Iowa's 10 million acres of tile-drained farmland and combat the state's multi-billion dollar problem with nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen-based fertilizers and manure can lead to excessive nitrates in groundwater that can be toxic to livestock and humans. High levels have plagued waterways in Iowa and throughout the Midwest for decades from chemical fertilizers and animal manure, uh, animal manure sprayed on fields. Modern tractors let farmers assess their soil and apply only as much fertilizer as needed, but still common to overspray. It's easy to see why. Yields of corn, the king crop of these parts, and planted on about 90 million acres nationwide, are at least doubled by fertilizer, and farmers want to be sure their crops have enough nutrients. Adding to the problem are the quick drainage systems that lie beneath so many fields, known as tiles, but actually plastic pipes that whoosh excess water away and into streams. Now, we talked about this already too. If they are PVC pipes, they are full of chemicals and chemicals are also whooshing uh, into the streams with this excess water. Numerous studies have found the low-tech systems remove half the nitrate or more from runoff before it reaches waterways. In bioreactors, the water passes through a buried mound of wood chips that breaks down much of the nitrate. In the buffers, it moves through a grassy area parallel to a stream. Too much nitrous, uh, nitrate and phosphorus in rivers and streams makes great food for algae and other plant growth that cuts oxygen in the water and blocks sunlight. Combined with industrial farming practices that have altered waterways by straightening streams and removing wetlands, that's bad news for fish that need clear water and slower currents. It hurts humans too. Nitrate contaminated drinking water can cause blue baby syndrome, where an infant's blood doesn't have enough oxygen. More than half of Iowa's rivers, streams, and lakes are too polluted to properly support aquatic life or fishing and swimming, according to the state. Iowa is among the largest contributors of nitrate runoff that flows to the Gulf, leading to the so-called dead zone by depleting oxygen necessary for marine life across several thousand square miles. Pressure to reduce the dead zone led Iowa's agriculture and natural resources departments to join in 2008 with Iowa State University for a strategy to address the problem. The effort has focused on voluntary actions. Iowa's legislature has consistently rejected proposals to require farmers to reduce runoff. Consistently rejected proposals to require farmers to reduce runoff. And here's why. Profit over people, okay? If farmers had to stop what they were doing to find a way to reduce runoff, to spend their money to reduce runoff, some of these farmers might have to make their farm smaller. They Maybe they couldn't possibly afford to do this for an entire farm. So then you lose some of the state's money from agriculture, from livestock, from whatever else, if you're shortening or minimizing the size of your farms. So of course the state doesn't want to make it a requirement because they know that in the end it could hurt farmers. The state doesn't want to have to pay for those things and that would hurt the state's money, right? So it's just like this whole just lose-lose, I guess if you could, uh, will situation, right? 15 years into the program, Iowa hasn't significantly reduced nitrogen runoff according to a 2019 estimate. Yes, I know it's 2023. Estimate was done in 2019. The problem in some ways has worsened as strong commodity prices encourage farmers to plant corn and soybeans on more land. Meanwhile, Iowa's giant hog industry has grown to about 24 million pigs, roughly triple the number in any other state, which means more manure gets spread over farmland. In Polk County, exasperation with nitrate pollution came to a head in 2015 when the agency that provides drinking water to 600,000 people in the Des Moines area went to court over the millions of dollars it was being forced to spend to filter unsafe levels from drinking water taken from the Des Moines and Raccoon Rivers. A judge ultimately dis dismissed the lawsuit against three Northwest Iowa counties, ruling the issue was one for the legislator to address, which they're not going to, or they haven't, right? Without hope of state mandates, local officials in Polk, Polk County sought to work cooperatively with agricultural groups. Part of that was, study, uh, was studying why so few farmers were installing bioreactors and streamside buffers. They found an inefficient system for installation that made it expensive and bothersome for farmers who had to arrange contractors and then seek reimbursement. Um, Polk County solution? 
handle all the arrangements to make it easy for farmers and group projects together for economies of scale. Even with the thousand dollar inducement to get farmers to sign on, they found the new process was about 15% cheaper, less than $10,000 for a typical saturated buffer and up to $15,000 for a bioreactor. Our success came from realizing we had been doing it wrong for like six years, said John Swanson, Polk County's water resources supervisor. Listen, at least they figured out they were doing it wrong and have now tried to find a way to do it right. Iowa Agriculture Secretary Mike Nag, who has strongly opposed requiring farmers to filter runoff, has embraced Polk County's effort and encouraged it elsewhere. In March, he promoted bioreactors and buffers at an event in Story County, north of Des Moines, where or conservation officials have adopted the new program. We're making it easy for landowners to say yes, and then we bring the resources. They are essentially 100% paid for. Either way, the work has to get done, and to have willing landowners and willing producers get involved, that will make work much better. But clean water advocates note that Iowa needs thousands of the systems added each year, not hundreds, and question whether voluntary efforts can even reach a small percentage of the state's farms, let alone those in other states. There's a lot of people who are doing really good work, said Alicia Vasto, the water program director at the Iowa Environmental Council. The fact of the matter is that it's just not at the pace and scale that's necessary to fix the problem. Listen. The projected cost of scaling up is staggering. To significantly reduce nitrogen and phosphate runoff, a 2017 analysis, listen, this is a 2017 analysis before inflation went through the mother flipping roof um, in the last couple years. So understand this is gonna cost way more. A 2017 analysis found that upfront costs could be as high as $4 billion. That would include more than 100,000 bioreactors to deal with runoff on two thirds of tile drained farmland as well as other solutions like cover crops. That would probably be double that now. You're looking probably, I'm gonna guess, probably eight or nine billion dollars right now for the exact same thing just because inflation is a bitch. Uh, Swanson, the Polk County official, is now working with state officials to build more wetlands, which cost more and require more land but can filter much more runoff than the bioreactors and filters, or sorry, and buffers. Helan wants such a wetland on his property and wants farmers to do more, but he thinks efforts should remain voluntary. Each farm is different, he said, and if governments try to require action, it could cause more problems and ultimately not be effective. Jerry Hill, who has farmed for 52 years, attended the Story County meeting with other farmers and is leaning toward installing a bioreactor along a creek that borders his property. He liked the idea of filtering the water at little cost to his bottom line, because profit matters, right? We're going to have to do a better job of keeping things clean. From what I've heard, what they have going now is as good as it gets, said Hill. So I just want you to know that there are options out there. You know, you've got clean energy trying to put in those, um, what are they called, digesters for the manure and stuff and turning it into fuel. And now you've got Iowa that wants to put these uh, bioreactors and buffers in to help cancel out some of the nitrate and phosphorus from the water before it hits the streams and then your water supply sources which is a really good idea but again nothing is free everything costs a flipping ton of money and what's interesting then is that the EPA and, and government they can't make it like a law that you have to do these things because of how much it would cost I mean they can really really suggest the crap out of it right but they can't make it like a countrywide law because it would be it would be detrimental, I think, to our agricultural system right now because of how much money it does cost. But Biden today is announcing an executive order to promote environmental justice, okay? So I like how the pictures they pick of him. He, he just looks, I don't even know what to say. So this says President, President Biden is set to announce an executive order today, Friday, that will create a new office in the White House focused on environmental justice efforts. The order will launch an Office of Environmental Justice which will work within the White House Council on Environmental Quality and be led by a Federal Chief Environmental Justice Officer tasked with coordinating implementation of environmental justice policies. That says a whole lot with saying absolutely nothing in my opinion. The order will also instruct agencies to look at gaps in science and data to better understand and prevent the cumulative impacts of pollution on people's health, according to a White House official. Excuse me. Additionally, it will require agencies to notify nearby communities in the event of a release of toxic substances from a federal facility, the official said. From a federal facility. Doesn't mean they have to notify you if Shell Petrochemical releases something toxic or if, you know, another DuPont kind of thing releases something toxic or whatever else, but if there's a toxic substance from a federal facility. So I'm guessing like nuclear 
power plants and I don't know what else the federal government owns that releases toxic chemicals. I need to do a little work on that one. The order aims to better protect overburdened communities from pollution, confront existing and legacy barriers and injustices, promote the latest science, and create accountability. The Biden administration plans to publish the first ever, first ever environmental justice scorecard, launch a White House campaign for environmental justice, and work to combat plastic pollution in communities, among other new actions. That's funny, work to combat plastic pollution in communities, but at the same time, they're constantly, all these communities are saying, hey, go buy bottled water because your regular municipal water, your tap water is tainted, boil advisory, you can't drink it, go buy the bottled water in all these plastic jugs, although now you do have things like uh, Liquid Death, that's literally the name of a water company, or water, Liquid Death in aluminum cans, like you'd get your Bud Light or your um, Heineken and, and whatever else in, and then you also have new ones like the the boxed drinks. I think Jaden Smith, Will Smith's son, he has one called Just Water that he made out of recycled cardboard packaging and it's like supposed to be the cleanest water you can get. He did that because of Flint, Michigan and then he put those the water systems in for free in Flint, Michigan for people to be able to go get this bottled water. But most of the majority of water Deer Park, Aquafina, Dasani, Pure Life, Nestle, the, the manufacturer itself, um, the majority of them are still going to be in these plastic bottles which have the PFAS and PFOS forever chemicals in them. So it's like a lose-lose no matter which direction you go. Anyway, the, president, uh, annou uh, the president's announcement on Friday afternoon, it'll be this afternoon, will be alongside environmental justice leaders, climate activists, and community leaders in the Rose Garden. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris will be in Florida to announce new steps to strengthen coastal resilience to climate change impacts and extreme storms, according to the White House. I don't know where she's going to be here. Uh, the president, during his announcement, will also highlight his investments in climate in comparison to the House Republican debt limit proposal that Speaker Kevin McCarthy, a uh, Republican from California, announced earlier this week. The proposal target aspects of the Inflation Reduction Act, which is a keystone to Biden's domestic agenda and that Democrats passed without GOP support last year, including aiming to end the green energy tax credits. While we're lowering costs for American families, now listen, I'm going to read these little two parts and I want you to understand that from these, just these two sentences, you can tell the sway of whoever wrote this article, okay? Again, pay attention to how things are written. While we're lowering costs for American families through clean energy tax credit, extreme MAGA Republicans are safeguarding handouts for big oil companies, a White House official said. While we're plugging millions of orphaned wells that emit methane and other dangerous gases, extreme MAGA Republicans would allow mining and energy companies to store hazardous waste without a permit, the official said. And that's how they end that article. Listen, there's going to be two sides to every story every single time. There's going to be those who believe that um, green, clean energy is better in the long run. There's going to be those that believe that the way things have been done is the way things should continue to be done. And then you're going to have to find that happy ground somewhere in the middle or else we're going to get nowhere as a country, as a society, as a whatever. You have to find that middle ground. So hopefully they can figure something out there um, and, and get it get it rolling, get the ball rolling so that states can do what they need to do to ensure that their water is clean for their um, residents so that the government can do what it needs to do to ensure that everything is a little bit safer for its residents, like the entire country, whether it's, my nose itches, the forever chemicals or clean water or, um, I don't know, less derailing trains, like just a little bit of everything. But hopefully things can start to pick up somehow from these changes that are going through from the EPA, whether it is with Green, green, clean energy, or whether it is allowing um, new, the like in Alaska, the Willow Project, I think, for oil and stuff like that. There's got to be that middle ground that both Democrats and Republicans are willing to meet on, or else we're all just going to be screwed for the foreseeable future. So there's that. Listen, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday, my dudes, and I will see you again soon. Um, I hope that was okay with you guys. That's what we talked about today. The water stuff, it intrigues me, and I'm interested in what they're actually going to do about anything. Everybody talks a lot, but it's just, are they going to put anything into action is what I want to know. So, I love you all. Have a great rest of your Friday, and I'll see you on the next one.